So a turkey and some news then, so what's that all about? So it's Thanksgiving in America as we're releasing this video and the video is only a short one and we've got some news at the end that some of you will probably have an idea um, what that news is going to be. So stick around, watch me make a turkey. Hopefully if you are American and it's kind of probably about 10 o'clock at night when we release this video over there in America, um, you, you'll kind of be full of turkey and you probably won't even want to watch this turkey. So skip right to the end if that's you. So when I make uh, characters and creatures like this, I generally like to use my own reference, as, as a lot of you will know. Um, I, I try and sketch a lot. I sketch every day with our, our sketch uh, groups over on Facebook. Um, but I, I like to uh, use my own reference to, to get myself going. So this is a quick sketch in Procreate of the turkey. As you can see there in the top right, I've just time-lapsed it for you to show you. Um, it's a very stylized one. Um, he's very, very simple, he's got that nice little woggle or whatever you call it that hangs down um, and he's got those big yellow feet. So that, that's our reference that we're going to use for this for this um, session. And down below already you can see we've got it get, getting to the point where we're starting to block out the shape very, very quickly. So as with a lot of um, these kind of projects, we just start with basic primitives. So a sphere will get us going, duplicate the sphere and use it for the head and now I'm just blocking out the main shape with a couple of basic tools so we're using the move tool we're using the clay tool and of course we're remeshing so but I've got plenty of videos if you're not too sure what's going on there so it's well worth checking back over my my YouTube channel if, if there's bits of this that you're not understanding so we're merging it all together we're going to do a voxel uh, remesh and that means it's one mesh now and we're already well on the way with the block out. So you can see it already looks like the reference in terms of shape. And I've just proved it there by moving it over the top of it. Um, I do like having the reference in those kind of positions um, rather than having it on a separate screen. So it's nice um, to have it in the scene with me um, while I'm working. So even just to keep an eye on it and keep doing a quick check to see if I'm, I'm, I'm hitting the reference. So I'm making the feet here. And what that involves really is a load of cylinders. So I am constantly remeshing and I'm just using things like crease and clay and I'm just defining the shapes as quickly as I can. Um, and again, I'm not spending a lot of time. There'll be quite a lot of times where I, uh, I, I'll i go a lot, lot longer with my detailing. But for things like this, I just try and get the shape down as quick as I can. Um, make one, certainly with toes and, and fingers and, and digits and things like that. I generally will make one that will do for, for, for most of the job and then I'll just duplicate it and I'll use that for, in this case, there will be um, three front toes and then we'll do one that we, we duplicate and swing it around. We rotate using the gizmo and we'll push that around the back. So there you can see me doing number two, copy it again, number three, and then spin that one around and that's number four, all from the scene menu. Now, select all them with multi-select merge them all together and then we've got a, a, a nice foot and with the clay tool I'm just putting some of the um, the features you'd see on the, the skin um, scales aren't they on, a, on a, a turkey's foot I keep calling it a chicken I think um, so there I mean it's a pretty standard bird's foot so it you know it, it kind of it, with, with a little bit of move now and a little bit of building up some of the volumes that we lost and there's, there's the foot looking okay. Uh, obviously we need two of them, so we, we'd switch them across on the mirror and just flip it across. So there's your feet done. A good time really uh, to check that that was level on the floor at this point. So just marking out where the wings are gonna go, although we're not gonna need that till later. Marking out where the eyes are gonna go, the, the big fat cheeks that he's got, the big bulging um, turkey cheeks. Um, and then we're going to need some eyes, so I just use another primitive, um, just quickly bring it up, scale it with the gizmo, put it put it in the right sort of place, flip it across with the mirror. These are all things that I've taught in all of the videos on, on my YouTube channel, so if you're not sure of any of that, there's plenty of, of uh, videos on the YouTube channel. And if you want to know a lot more about it, then stick around till the end, um, and we'll, we, uh, again, um, uh, I've got news about... Um, what we're going to do in terms of a course. 
So I didn't like what I'd done there with the eye. So what I did was I, I, I made it too white in, in the whites of the eye. So I went back and I just used some pinks and reds, made it a bit more stylized. So it's a bit more painterly. Um, shouldn't really ever use white on, a, on an eye because you're always going to try and put a highlight in. Um, or, or it might just look better with that. So you, you'll see now I'm, I'm not even going to go for a material. I'm just going to paint a highlight in like that. So that's the eye looking quite okay straight away. And then just pull out a little bit and we'll have a look at the uh, the, the next thing I kind of focus on is the, the building up the muscles or, or around that eye to give it a bit more character. Um, and then using the move tool, I'll generally, will, you know, I'd be pulling it around all the time to make sure it's matching the, the reference. Um, make sure there's character in that face and the cheeks are a proper bird's kind of beak look um th this is sometimes that people that do this like me and people that you'll see sculpting all the time we sometimes make it look like we're just throwing it out in, in no time but the the point here isn't so much the, the skull in the skill that this skull the skill in the sculpting it's the fact that we know what a turkey looks like and that's because we've you know generally people like me we, we do this kind of thing a lot so we, we we might have to look at reference all the time so we'd know bird anatomy and that brings me on to another point actually that we're you know we're going to be looking over over the uh, probably after the christmas period we're going to start looking at anatomy in, in our youtube channels so i'm going to break down um quite a few anatomy courses or or, or um, a human anatomy and mammalian anatomy and then maybe a little bit of bird anatomy further down the line. And we will be bringing out a course. So hopefully, if that's something you're into, that, that, that'll be in our in our new library. So a bit of painting now. So, uh, uh, you know, the one thing I do like about um, programs like Nomad and Forger and, and obviously ZBrush and 3D Co is that, that ability, ability to just throw down these colours you know, disregarding anything like texture maps or UVs, it's, it's not a technical thing we're doing here. It's basically, let's just get our colors down. Um, and that, you know, that's, it's one of the great things about the, about Nomad. You just, you know, you, with your alpha brushes and your, your, the painting tool, you're just very quickly giving an idea of the color. Now, I um, quickly laid down blue all over the neck, and there's a reason for that. So when I was looking at the reference, I was thinking there's a lot of, the neck is very purple and a lot of that skin around the, the neck and the top of the head, it's not bright red. It's got blues in it and greens in it and all sorts. So I thought if I underlay, underlay or do an underlay of blue and then when I put the red on, as you can see, leave it semi-transparent, that'll start giving us that that kind of you know veiny look. And, and it worked really well. I just thought it looked with very, very simple brush strokes. It, you know, it had a lot of blue popping through. So... Um, at this point, I made a few decisions. I wasn't happy with the way I'd done the body. I wasn't happy with the with the feathers, so I smoothed them all down. But what I did decide to do was go and have a look at the feathers. So I used this, which is called the triplanar brush. And I just use this when I want to make big flat shapes, usually. Um, very good for more hard surface stuff that we, we will be looking at. Um, I just made the feathers, and they're there for the tail. Now, with the tail feathers, I kept two sets. So what you're seeing is set number one. And what I wanted to do was make sure they were always kept separate so that I can always pull them around. Because if you voxel merge them together, then you can never, you know, you can't really tweak them as an individual um, feather. Now, even though they're one group and one, um, uh, one set of feathers there in one go, because they weren't attached, even though they are one, then you can move them around individually as well. So that, that's something quite useful when you're, you're trying to get the look and feel of the uh, of the character. I've left the, the tail quite thin, um, sorry, quite thick, um, because I, I, I wanted to play around with it a lot before I finished the project. Um, and then I duplicated the tail again, that gave me the two sets, and then I did it again, and that becomes the wing. So what you see in there now is I decided to just use exactly the same shape and just thin it out um, in both dimensions, and then just with a move tool, arc it around, and that gives me the, the the kind of rough shape of the feathers, and I'll duplicate that again um, in in the video in a moment, and you'll see that 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 gave me the full wing, and I thought that was looking quite quite good quite quickly. You can see I've smoothed the body down a lot, um, so I'll I'll have to go back in and change that in a moment. You'll see that happen in the video, but I didn't like it when I, I did it far too aggressive on the, on the feathers. 
So I'm just picking some colours there and I'm just trying to match the reference with the feathers by doing painting. So without any sculpting even at this point. Um, obviously if you're going to do something like 3D printing then you probably would want to make sure you put in a lot of surface detail in rather than the surface paint but it kind of worked for what I was doing. The eye wasn't popping enough so I thought right we'll make him look a little bit like he's had no sleep which a turkey tonight wouldn't um, and maybe the one you've eaten didn't so he didn't run fast enough did he? So if you if you like um, this kind of style of modeling um, and you like the way I'm teaching it then th what I've been promising for quite some time now is that I'll put all this into a course um, so I did that um, and I did a, a nine hour course um, with lots of bonuses in there and lots of painting as well as the modeling. So if you, um, as I've been saying all the way through this video, stick around to the end of the video and it gives you a little bit more of an explainer. But as of uh, this morning and as of the end of this video, then you can go ahead and purchase that course. So if you're on the waiting list already, then thank you so much for, for, for waiting. But now it's time to go and get the video. Hi, I'm Glenn Southern and I'm a digital sculptor based in the UK. I just wondered if you knew that you can sculpt on an iPad. Yep, you can sculpt right there on your iPad with an Apple Pencil. The iPad has grown to a level where we can now use industry standard tools right there with the Apple Pencil. I've created a course that teaches you exactly that. Digital sculpting has been around for a few decades now but sculpting on an iPad is fairly new. I've created a course that'll take you through all of the basics you need to get going right the way from the moment you open Nomad. The first part of the course is all about the interface and what all of those buttons do. Section two is where we dive in and actually make a character. I've given you all the references you need and I'll walk you through every single part of how to make his head, arms, body, all of the detailing on the skin and even how to paint him. If you're looking for a course to get you up and running with iPad sculpting, then this could be the course for you.